this week on Healthy Living, it is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month and what you need to know about cervical cancer coming up. Plus, researchers aim to create a new version of the mRNA vaccine to make it more accessible everywhere. Finally, vegans celebrate a decade of veganuary. We'll have these stories and more in this edition of Healthy Living. Hello and welcome to Healthy Living. I'm Linor Moudou. Get this, a woman dies every two minutes from cervical cancer. And Sub-Saharan Africa has the highest rate of cervical cancer in the world, according to the Union for International Cancer Control. Called a silent killer, experts say the disease develops very slowly and can take years or even decades for the abnormal changes in the cervix to become invasive cancer cells. The signs and symptoms of more advanced cancer of the cervix include abnormal vaginal bleeding, such as between periods or after menopause, pain in the pelvic region, and blood in the urine for more advanced disease. The majority of all cases are due to the human papillomavirus, HPV infection. But there is hope. Cervical cancer can be prevented or treated when detected early. January is Cervical Cancer Awareness Month around the world. Cervical cancer is a form of cancer that affects the cells of the cervix in the female reproductive organ globally. One of the most common cancers among women, the World Health Organization estimates that 604,000 women were diagnosed with cervical cancer in 2020. It's the fourth most common cancer in women worldwide. And the in 85% of those cases, uh, it happens in low and middle income countries. So there are a lot of women who are at risk of developing and dying of cervical cancer worldwide. Cervical cancer is caused by the human papilloma virus or HPV, often transmitted through sexual intercourse. It can be prevented through vaccination and screening and can be better treated if caught early. Experts say the incidence rate varies significantly between countries and regions due to differences in access to screening, vaccination programs and treatment. The World Health Organization warns that poor access contributes to up to 90% of deaths and most of them are in Africa. However, every woman is at risk of developing cancer of the cervix. Some misconceptions about cervical cancer is that it may not ever affect me. Someone might think that this is not something that I need to worry about. But cervical cancer can happen in any person who has a cervix. And so it's really important to understand ways to protect yourself from any risk of getting cervical cancer and ways to screen to identify it early and treat before it becomes out of control. To lower the incidence of cervical cancer among women in Africa, the Union for International Cancer Control recommends, among other things, covering cervical cancer services in basic healthcare packages using existing testing platforms for other diseases such as HIV and tuberculosis to improve cervical cancer surveillance, screening and management, and integrating prevention, detection, and palliative care into other health programs. How much do you know about cervical cancer and how concerned are you about the disease? Here are some reactions from Nigeria. I actually don't know anything about it, so can you enlighten me more on it? Um, I know cervical cancer is the cancer that affects the cervical areas and a lot of women all over the nation, especially in Africa, are suffering from cervical cancer and it's just, it's just a pity that we have to go through this type of sickness here in Africa. You know, as much as HIV awareness is everywhere, cervical cancer is not out there, like out there. So I, I feel like experts should make it a thing of let it always be out there. Whether it's January or February or whatever month of the year, let there be an awareness because it's kind of becoming too rampant and it's becoming a thing of concern for women. I had a cousin. I lost a cousin to that. So it's not a good thing to behold. Of course I'm concerned about this because I also want to have a checkup for the cervical cancer, especially when you're like um, aging. From 35 upwards, you always have to start 
thinking of your health more than your wealth. My question to experts would be that you, you are aware of these things. How do we help women curb cervical cancer faster and better? Dr. Oluwasami Akintade is Director of Reproductive Health for the Elizabeth Glazer Pediatric AIDS Foundation's Lesotho Country Program. He tells us more about the cancer of the cervix. There are risk factors for a woman to develop cervical cancer, and some of these risk factors include early sexual abuse, um, first pregnancy at a very young age, having multiple sexual partners, which increase the risk of the individual from contacting multiple viruses. Um, we have things like the use of tobacco, which compromise the immunity of the individual and the integrity of the cells of the service. We have immunocompromised status from any reason, uh, particularly uh, from, for women who are living with HIV, that increase their risk of developing cancer of the cells. Women who live with HIV, they are at a higher risk of developing cancer of the cervix. They are actually about six times higher compared to women who are not living with HIV. Normally, uh, by the time an individual is infected with human papilloma virus, most of the time, that individual will not have any signs of being infected with human papilloma virus. And most of the time, our body is able to completely remove this virus. However, in about 5 to 10 percent of women, uh, due to one reason or the other, the infections will not be completely cleared. And that means that uh, the virus will remain in the body. So this woman is not going to have a sign. By the time you are having a sign or a symptoms, the truth is that it is too late. So women should start screening from the age of 25 years if they are living with HIV. And for women who are not living with HIV, they can start screening from the age of 30 years. The aim is to dictate very early changes in the service which are indicators of signs that if nothing is done, the individual have the possibility of developing cervical cancer. So the earliest screening method which was being used <coughs> is the pap smear. What the pap smear checks for are abnormal changes on the cells lining of the cervix, which we call the epithelial layers of the cervix. The other test which we commonly use is the visual inspection with acetic acid. Moving forward, um, more and more countries will be adopting the use of human papilloma virus testing, which is the most sensitive of all the various tests and it's very, very accurate. So HPV testing actually tests for the virus that causes the cancer. And once we take note of that, we can put treatment in place at the earliest possible time. The cervical cancer elimination strategies hands on three legs. The first is the vaccination of girls between the age of 9 and 14 years, ensuring that at least 90% of our girls are fully vaccinated with human papilloma virus at the age of 15 years. So if a woman is fully immunized against human papilloma virus. It means that when this woman comes in contact with human papilloma virus during her reproductive life, the body will be able to completely attack this invading uh, human papilloma virus and completely remove them. The second leg is the use of high precision screening method. And the last part of the strategy is that all women who either develop what we refer to as pre-cancers, which are the abnormalities that you see before a woman develop cancer, or those who actually develop cancer, at least 90% of them should receive treatment.
The Coalition for Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, CEPI, says it will provide up to $4.3 million to biotechnology company Vaxas to advance development of a patch for mRNA vaccines. The mRNA vaccines such as Pfizer, BioNTech and Moderna COVID jabs have been among the most heavily used during the coronavirus pandemic. However, they have the disadvantage of needing ultra-cold storage before use. CEPI says Vaxas a vaccine delivery platform could improve access to mRNA vaccines by removing the need for frozen storage, enabling easier distribution and offering accurate and safe dosing with minimal waste. Furthermore, CEPI says it will invest up to $50 million over 10 years to help Senegal's Institut Pasteur manufacture vaccines for the Global South. The coalition says it is creating a network of vaccine manufacturers in developing countries to help boost capacity and reserves for future outbreaks and pandemics. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization has appealed for more than $2 billion for its work in 2023 to help millions of people facing health emergencies around the world. WHO says all of these emergencies overlap with the massive health system disruptions caused by the COVID-19 pandemic and outbreaks of other deadly diseases like measles and cholera. From almost nowhere a decade ago, vegan foods can be found almost anywhere, not just in fashionable and trendy restaurants, but also in the Arctic Circle, where there is not a great tradition of veganism. Take a look. It all began as a simple idea created by a husband and wife at their York cottage. Their aim was small scale, to provide a support group for people who might be tempted to give up meat as a New Year's resolution. Veganuri's UK spokesperson, Tony Vernelli, says they were surprised by the instant interest in the movement. There's a lot of groups out there that tell people reasons to try a vegan diet, but there isn't really one group that's just focused on supporting people who, who want to try a vegan diet. So that was really, you know, the premise of Veganuary. According to the organizers of Veganuary, the movement away from meat and animal products has become more than a UK or even a European phenomenon. Vernelli says the growing popularity of veganism is being driven by a combination of reasons. Beyond the concern about animal welfare, people's health and well-being is a focus. Obesity and heart disease are now considered by scientists to be major contributors to many chronic diseases, there is also growing awareness about damage to the environment. Vernelli says the movement has been important in showing people the benefits of reducing meat consumption. In the last few years, it's been about a third of participants who've said, I'm actually going to stay vegan now after dipping my toe in the water for a month. And the number one reason why they choose to do that is it's easier than they expected it to be. And then of the remainder, about 75% say, I'm not going to stay vegan, but I'm going to cut back by at least 50%. Indicor is a consultant who has developed meat-free product ranges for big UK supermarkets. Core believes the health benefits should be a focus and people should be encouraged to reduce their meat and dairy consumption rather than cutting them out completely. We should probably start thinking about plant-based as being health, driving the health and sustainability agenda and meat reduction agenda versus necessarily driving vegan agenda. It's important that we service vegan needs, but it's also important now that we really start focusing on health and sustainability of the food system. Vegan URI is now a popular movement with chapters in seven countries including Germany, the US and Chile. Market analysts say it will be a while before the impact of veganuary can be assessed. That's our show for today. For more health news, wellness tips and medical breakthroughs, stay connected to Voice of America at voaafrica.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Lenore Moudou. Until next time, stay well and strive to make every day a healthy day. <laughs>